important part throughout history. From the early Hellenistic period, Jericho was a winter resort for rulers of rich people of Palestine. Uh, Roman generals, including Pompey, passed through Jericho. Herod the Great, um, he built um, a winter palace there, and it was the oasis to attract bustling business. It was for his, it was a place of great value, great purpose. Uh, and in the time Jesus uh, um, writing this text, it flourished with the construction of many villas and cultural palm trees and different things that were there and spices and perfume. So it was a place of well doing, well being. And so sometimes we socially begin to um, designate people to a particular mindset without even knowing what's happening. And so Jesus now is about to give them a story and he's going to deconstruct the narrative to them in a certain way. And as he begins to do so, we begin to understand what's taking place. Because this place itself was a place where Jesus himself had passed through Jericho twice when he cured two blind men in, in Mark 10. 46 to, um, to 52 and, and Matthew 20, 29 to 34, and when he converted Zacharias and the tax collector. These were all in Jericho. And also, what we also find is that of, it was a linking road. Now, in ancient Israel, it was, a port, it was an important road, and it was the border between two tribes, the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin. Um, and these were the only two existing tribes of, of Israel, 12 tribes of Israel. And so we get this background setting, but also interestingly enough in this text, it was um, a road, it was three kilometers east, was a, there's an inn in this particular area, and in that place it had a world called Valley of Darkness. It was a natural rift between Jerusalem and Jericho, Valley of Darkness, yea, though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Psalms 23. So here's this interesting text, and Jesus is about to expound upon it. And he says to them, he's about to deal with some things. And he says, Who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? And now then we begin to break this down. And Jesus now then starts with a story. He starts with a story. And he starts with a story that's interesting. There was a man who went down to Jerusalem, went down, went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. That's the open line. There was a man who went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. The minute he says that, they would have known that there is a man who is of an economical status or something. But here it is, but then they began to think, because what you would have had then, there is a man that went down to Jericho. You can imagine them thinking, what kind of man would be going down there? What kind of person would be going down to Jericho? They, he's got their attention on point one. And then he said this, and he fell amongst thieves. Now the mere fact that he fell amongst thieves meant that he had money and because he fell amongst thieves on the road of Jericho would have meant that the man would have been foolhardy. In other words, nobody would go down to Jericho knowing that what they have is wealth and then going down to Jericho would then go with wealth on their own knowing that this road was a dangerous road. And they're going down to Jericho, a dangerous road, and whilst going down there, falls amongst thieves. Here's a point. He fell amongst thieves. And then when they got him, they stripped him, they beat him, and they left him for dead. Have you ever been to a place, church, where people have beaten us down so much we have nothing left to live and give? And it seems like we have been left for dead. Left for dead. But having been left for dead, he's not quite dead. Left for dead, but not dead dead left for dead 
but not dead. And here he is. And then it says, And now a priest came down the road. He looked at him and passed on the other side. Church, it's easy for us to see those who are hurting, who are broken, who are damaged, who are completely, completely distraught and destroyed in life and laying down there. But the priest knew that if he had touched him as a dead man, he would not be allowed to continue the, uh, the work in the temple. Because if he had touched a dead person, he would be ceremonially unclean. And here the point is this. He would have been ceremonially unclean. But here the priest was. But he was socially dirty. He put the office of the church, what he had to do, the ritual of the church first, over the rights of the person. Sometimes church, we put the things of church before we see the people. Oh, I gotta be at church at this time. Oh, I gotta do this at church this time. Oh, I gotta do this and that. But God says, no, no. But there are people who are hurting, who are broken, who are left for dead, and we don't just come beside them, but we cross over because we're busy doing church. So when we get to church, we say, "Can I give you an amen, a high five, spin around, praise the Lord?" And that time has finished. Finished. And left him for dead. Still in the same position, same place. But then you can imagine them gripped in the narrative that this man is left for dead and the priest goes down. The priestly orders, the one who asked him, would have known exactly what it meant to touch him. And the Jesus that we know bows down and touches those who were dead and took them by the hand that they might live again. And then it says, in the same way, the Levite came. He came a bit closer, but not close enough. He was one of the law. He looked at him, but guess what? He didn't stop with him. And oftentimes, church, we look, but we don't stop. Because in the background, we're singing, walk on by. And so now then we come even closer, but the Levi knows there was a trap. Oftentimes what you get in Jericho Road is that they would pretend for somebody to be dead and then you go and help them and then they jump on you and rob you. But he said, better safe than sorry. And continues. Now then. The crowd is gripped. And Jesus said, a Samaritan who was on the road came to where he was. Stop just there. That part is enough. Interestingly enough, the, the Samaritans were they were the bleed of um, the Jews, and probably the Babylonians and other leftover different parts of, of, of um, the Jewish nation today. They only stand less than a thousand Samaritans left alive today. But the Samaritan was seen as no good. Interestingly enough, if you wanted to insult a Jew, you call him a Samaritan. In um, John 8, 48, when Jesus said to the, said to the, the, um, the Jewish authority that your father is a devil, they then responded then and answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast cast out the devils? To call you a Samaritan was to insult you. Here is the Samaritan. Here is the one that was socially rejected. Here is the black youth that didn't have the upbringing, didn't have the education, didn't have the eloquence of words, didn't have what everybody else had, didn't have the opportunities in life. Here was a disenfranchised white youth who lived in a council estate 
who didn't know anything better in life, didn't have nothing going too well in him. Here was a disenfranchised. Here was the one that they would laugh at. Here was the one they said, yes, here is the real villain in the story. This is the villain. They were grabbed now. He's got them where he wants them in the middle of his hand. He said, then the Samaritan came and they was there. And here's the point. He stopped them. And he looked at him and was moved to the depth of being with pity. Stop. In the scriptures, oftentimes, we miss racism in a text. In some headings of, of the scriptures, in some of your Bibles, it will say, in this section, the Good Samaritan. That in itself is a racial profiling already. Because what it should say is, who is my neighbor or the good neighbor? Because the minute you say good Samaritan, immediately it means that every Samaritan is bad and here's just a good one. The minute you say the good Samaritan, the minute you say the good black man, the good black woman, the good so and so, the good that, the good whatever, whatever, the minute you say the good, it means that everybody else within that group is bad. So sometimes we let racism sweep through the text and we miss it. We miss it. But here it goes now. The Samaritan was there and came and had pity with him. Notice this firstly. The Samaritans were not seen as being ceremonially clean. They were not allowed in the temple. So he had nothing to lose. Second thing is this. He wasn't worried about who would attack him. He was brave. We're going to go that in a second. And then here he was now, then he takes him. He looked at moved by death. And so he came and bound his wounds, pouring in wine and oil. Wow. And put him on a beast and brought him to an inn for care. On the next day, he put down to the nearest room and gave to the innkeeper. Look at him, he said, and whatever more you need, if you're out of pocket, when I come back this way, I'll square it up or settle it with you. Which, um, right, settle it with you. Let me stop there. Let me break down some points to you very quickly with that point. Put some points down here. We knew that the man himself was probably reckless. We knew the priest and the Levite couldn't stop with him. And we knew the Samaritan stopped with him. The Samaritan seemed like he was a villain. The Samaritan seemed like he was the one that you couldn't trust. He's turned the story upside down in the middle of the narrative. But notice this, he takes him to an inn. When he takes him to the inn, it's an inn where they must have known him because they allowed him to take the person there and check this out. And they trusted him, he must have had good credit. He paid down on his well-being and says, I pay the rest when I come back. Note this, firstly, he didn't leave him on the road like that. He attended to his, his wounds first. Church, there are people on the streets in our community that are half dead. Yeah. We need to tend to their wounds first. Christ said, I am the true vine, the wine. I am the Christ, the anointed one, the oil. If we're going to be like Jesus, we must, we must, we must, we must meet people where they are at. We must. And now he takes him to place and says, I'll pay for him, look after him. Notice this, he didn't say to the man, you owe me anything. He said, look after him, and when I come back, I will pay you anything that's left over. Our church has to be practical. We are in a crisis right now like never before. And the time of preaching amen and praise the Lord has gone. The church must be the voice that is relevant. Notice this today, right now. When the government is talking about necessary services, the church doesn't even come into the equation. 
because the church cannot stand in a place where it says well you're too unholy to come here the church needs to be out there to reach those who cannot make the way from where they are notice when jesus went to the synagogue it wasn't a good meeting when he went in there he turned the table over and thrashed all the money the other time before that he confused them jesus didn't get on very well in the synagogue but he got on wonderful on the road the church means people not building and therefore we must be part of the road and the community in which we find ourselves because if we're not then we become irrelevant the church must be that notice this the samaritan who was his neighbor he helped him no matter he didn't look his race creed or color but he helped him we too must help we too must reach out to those who are disenfranchised, who are challenged, who are hurting, who are confused. Church, these last week or so, we've been seeing this thing in with George Floyd and his murder in the streets and the riots that took place. I was looking to an article of the day, and it says there are three kinds of people who rise in this situation. The first are demonstrators. They're shouting for George Floyd and saying black lives have value. Our lives have value. Not just black, but every single life has a value. I have a right to live. Then there are those who write. They are angry and they trash the place because it's your place, it's never mine. I'm not allowed to come to your shops or trash your shops. I'm angry. Then there's those who've never had the haves and the haves not. They loot because guess what? They'll never be able to afford to buy it themselves. So this opportunity in the midst of anger and rioting is looting. As a church, we as a church, we as a body of Christ, we are apt to understand this. Now, for us to relate to what's happening in a society right now, we must be the Samaritans, the neighbors of the disenfranchised, the neighbors of the marginalized, the neighbors of those who have been castrated economically, the neighbors of those who have been rejected socially in every sphere. We must be the voice that speaks on their behalf, that supports them, not just with prayer, but guides them through it. Things we need to do to put in place to help them do that. If they're gonna get a job interview, we pay for the haircut before they go help them to get a suit to go but we need to be practical to help them we need to do something where we work with children from a young age that we empower them that they are somebody they are valued they made in the image and the likeness of god and in so doing when we become begin to be the voice for the people who are voiceless we riot not in the way we said violently but we riot in the ways i said last week but then also this week i want to say to you then we also need to loot but not the looting of the streets because that looting is not necessarily the answer. But church, when we are looting, we fail to loot. You're going to ask me, what do you mean by that? Well, firstly, we must loot. First point L, we must lead. We must lead in the direction for equal rights for all people and be a voice that gives directive in the most difficult of times. Leading limited to the church gates is passive leadership, but leadership must surpass the doors of the church building and reach the community and the people in which we see ourselves. That way, only that way, can we be the good news to the people who are living in the bad times. Oh, in looting, we must be organized. All oh, very well getting excited. Oh, well, you know, this has happened. We must be organized. We must have an agenda on how we will bring aid and bring about to those who are disenfranchised. We must be deliberate and systematic in our voice, a voice of violence and innocent people. We must be organized when we say enough is enough and stand with those who have no choice and have no voice. We must be organized in what we put in place, not willy-nilly, but we must put a plan and organize it so it can bear fruits. We must give the people all oh, optimism. We must be optimistic in our directives. People who have no hope, 
lack optimism, and as a result, become lost and seek violence as a way of getting through and speaking the voice that they do not have. When we give people optimism, when we are optimistic, we give them hope. And when we give them hope, we give them a get up ability. We give them a chance to achieve and do what they need to do and be what they need to be. Last thing, T. We must be tenacious. Church, we cannot march today and pack up tomorrow. We must be tenacious in our efforts. If we are to seek a change, we must be the change first. We must see that change does not come overnight, but it might take weeks, it might take months, it might take years, it might take, take another generation, but we must keep on keeping on. Because when we are tenacious, when the world says that we are tenacious, then the world will work with us. We won't become a silent word, but we become a voice. Because when we are tenacious, no matter what happens, no matter what the situations, we never ever give up. We never ever close up. We keep pushing, we keep trying, we keep fighting, we keep believing, we keep speaking until it becomes a reality. When only when we do all of that, then we see the glory of God. That's why the church must loot. And that's why when we see those on the street who have no choice, who have no hope, we are the voice for them. We are the Samaritans. For those broken down, beaten down, those who feel like there's nothing else to live for in life, those who feel like life has done them the worst. You can't preach hell to people who are living in hell already. You cannot preach hell to those who are living in hell already. When George Floyd died, it reminded me of something. I just want to share something off my heart. Some years ago, um, my, my, my friend's partner was killed by the police and she rang me and said, can you come to my house and so we can tell the children together that their father had been killed by the police, died in police custody. And until you sit in that space, at that table, and saying to all the three young boys and saying, your father's gone. He's not coming back again. Unless you sat at that table and no words can explain or can express and seeing these young boys cry, you won't understand. But I had to commend the later one. I said, having all they've been through, they still got jobs, still got their life together, didn't end up in prison, still pressing on because they knew that their lives mattered too. I want to say this to you, church, to all our young people, your lives are worth something. It's not a matter of your race, your creed, your color, your religion. Because you were made in the image and likeness of God, your life has something. I want to conclude with this. When the Bible says that God breathed life into the nostril of man and he became a living being. What he breathed into man was purpose, potential, future, hope, a career. Doctors, lawyers, teachers, he breathed into them the ability to be great. You have a right and you have a duty and you have a responsibility to be great. Does your life matter? Does your life have purpose to it? Does your life have destiny attached to it? I want you to breathe. And as you breathe, as the church roots, as the church rides, we will see the glory of God. And we will reach down and help those in need of help. And be the, that voice that says, 
give me the bill of whatever's left after. Because that life matters. Your life matters to the glory of God. Amen. 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 I didn't see you in the face per se, but I want to say to you, church, that um, I'm blessed with you today. And um, this is going to be our new platform going forward. We will do our services via Zoom and um, those who preach and wrote what we do so. But I want to say to you all, church, that um, it has been a, a challenging time. Maybe Corona pushed us to have to change in the times in which it's changing. Maybe it just pushed us to have to become more diverse and uh, much more creative in how we do church. I want to welcome any opportunities that any ideas that you may have and things that you want to discuss you want to do as church. I know it's changed, but um, I want to welcome every idea, every thought, everything you can think of that we need to do to make things more engaging. I want to just finally say this before I finish. Brighton Road, New Testament Church of God, Alveston, Derby, DE24, 8SZ, is the building. But you, you are the church. And we might not be in the building. But we still have in church. So when we come together, worship together, praise God together, we have church together. And I pray that you're blessed today. I pray that this word has blessed you. And I want it to go into your heart, into your mind. I'm going to keep pushing our young people. I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep pushing. Because I want you to achieve. I want you to be great. Because greatness is your opportunity that's been given to you by God. Amen. Reverend John, thank you. Hand it over to you, sir. Thank you, Pastor. That is an awesome sermon. You need to record that, you know. We need to get that out public. Get out, get out there. People need to hear that we as the church, we're going to riot. Yes, we are, you know. Because that's what we need to do. Stand up, stand up. It's a song by, um, was it Bob Marley, Stand Up For Your Rights? We have to stand up for our rights. Amen. Praise be to God. Thank you so much. Listen, church, I wonder if you could leave me a big, big favor now. Can everybody unmute your microphone? It may be a little bit noisy, but it's okay. To go, just unmute your microphone. That's good. That's good. Everyone's unmuted yet. We've still got a few more people not unmuted yet. Let's unmute your microphone. Because we're going to shout out to each other. We're going to just greet each other in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Whatever name you see on there that you know, we're going to greet them. And those that you don't know, we're going to greet them anyway. Yes. Let's greet each other. Praise be to God. And I greet you in the name of Jesus. Praise be to God. It's good to see you. God bless you, Sai. God bless you, Donna. God bless you, It's good to see you. Hazel, it's good to see you. Bishop, it's good to see you. Colleen, it's good to see you. Michael. Oh, Cheryl. Tanya. Oh, look at you guys. Absolutely awesome. Debbie, what up, Debbie? Oh, praise be to God. Oh, Sai. Queenie, what up? Oh, uh, it's so really good, you know. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Isn't it awesome, isn't it? Yeah. Being able to greet each other in Jesus' name. God bless you, Sister Ben. God bless everybody. Yes, 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 yes. God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Hey everybody! Mr. Boxerman, I see you now. I'm watching you. Happy <laughs> God bless you, Pastor. God bless you, Brother Jude. Church, can I ask you a favor? As we run. Yes, sir. Sister Nikki, it's good to see you. Let's good go. to see you okay, too. Oh, praise God. And um, to see your lovely man hiding behind you. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Liam, what up? Sister yes, Sharon, what's happening, what everyone? Uh, it's nice it's to hear from everyone. It's good, it's good. Um, Let's ask you to ask you a quick favour. Have you noticed, as, as we scroll through 
Yeah, I mean, here. There seems to be a shortage of men. We notice that. There's a shortage of men. Can everyone mute, please? Everyone, yeah. everyone mute, please. Mute, mute, mute. Everyone mute, please. Mute. You've muted yourself. We can't hear you. Sorry. Yeah, is that better? <laughs> I do apologise. You know, technology. What can I say? I'm an old man. Have you have, have you noticed there's a lack of men within this 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 church group at the moment? Yeah. Can I ask that each and every one of us bring a man along for next week? Just grab a man off the street. Say, come, sit down. <laughs> Make him listen to something. Do you know what I mean? Because we need to get the balance right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So grab a man, get him in there. Let's just have some fun together. Brother Owen, is that you there? I see you. My days, I see you, my brother. Oh, praise be to God. Listen, we've got some notices out here, messages about birthdays. Um, let's see who birth we've got. Um, Sissy's birthday, Sade's birthday um, coming up. We have, oh, look at that. We've got this one here. Awesome. It's my birthday tomorrow. I just thought I'd mention that. <laughs> and uh, anyone else's birthday, we're going to give a shout at Sister Mary. Are you going to give us that birthday new tea style? Yes? Yes. Um, yes. Praise yes. be to God. Let's sing happy birthday. Praise God. Okay, Sister no. Mary, take it away. Love singing, so we're going to sing together. Happy birthday to you, new tea style. A happy, a happy birthday, birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. You're gone. You're gone. Day of the year, a happy birthday yeah just to let you know i'm going to be 21 tomorrow but that's another story no, I can't say that. I must be truthful. I'm in church. Hallelujah. All I'm going right. to be 61 tomorrow. <laughs> Praise God. Slip of the tongue, you know. All right, Reverend John. As, <laughs> we're going to have, um, we're going to have um, our, our uh, Xavier's going to share the tithe and offering PowerPoint to give you an idea of how to contribute your tithes and offerings because, uh, as we know, the, the church still has to function, lights have to be, electric has to be paid in gas, and so on and so forth, you know. Uh, and also, if you want to be on our mailing list, please uh, just let us know, myself, Sister Mary, Pastor Paul, let us know, and we can add you on to our mailing list that gives you all the notices and stuff that's happening um within our church just want to kind of share there we go the video is up there just want to share one a couple of notes with you um on on uh, tuesday we have prayer meeting here at church 7 30 um you can log on to zoom to access the, the prayer meeting on tuesday thursdays we have women's meeting every other thursday we have a men's meeting um here at church and of course, on a Sunday, we have services here at 12 o'clock. Thank you all once again for joining us today. It's been so awesome. You know, I got, I got goosebumps going on the back of my neck. You know what I mean? It's just so great to see you guys. It is so awesome. And I pray to God that you had a wonderful time today. And the message has reached you today. And someone, microphone, please. Someone, microphone, there's, there's background noises here. Thank you. That's better, yes, I can hear now. Yeah, and I pray that you've, you've had a good, wonderful time and that as you leave here, as you leave the service today, that you will ponder, consider, think about how you too can riot and do for us, for us, for people out there, what needs to be done. I'm just going to hand over now to Pastor Paul so that he can do the final farewells. Pastor, are you there? Yeah. Pastor, you good? Good, good much it's been wonderful seeing you and as john said um, do find somebody to bring with you next week we just really 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 appreciate it with you all and um on i sincerely miss everybody so much it's, it's unbelievable but um but we we, we're, we are where we are now but guess what if we can keep together praying with each other i'm gonna ask you please make sure you attend the prayer meeting this week 
it's really really powerful and um, we're gonna have by next week we're gonna have the men's session set up it's gonna be phenomenal with the men um the women are already floating and the youth are doing pretty well but i'm actually just please support and bring somebody on board with you we're gonna have some unique situations and things we're gonna bring to the table um that we want you to be part of i want to say to you love you all um and pray that god will just keep you you know we, we, we've been through some difficult times here but i'm gonna ask you also to continue with your financial support because we still have to pay the bills even though the building is closed and if you you've never been able to give please we the service will be online will be uploaded afterwards and uh youtube will give you our bank details whatever you can bless us with be a blessing because um it's a blessing for the house of god it's not for me it's for the kingdom of god um um, and I ask you just to look for all those um, in, in, in place and I ask you that Lord that, that you just bless them in, the, in, in everything that we have to do all right now I'm going to ask you Bishop Gardner just to close for us in um, prayer if possible and um, and we will then be able to get the link Father we want to thank you for Today, we want to thank you for this time of fellowship together as a church and a community. We thank you that, Lord, time and space means nothing when it comes to your work. And we thank you, Lord, that as we come together as a church family, that you will bless us. Lord, that our hands will be your hands and our feet would be your feet. That, Lord, we can carry this gospel to the streets. Lord, that we can loot, as you have also, um, instructed us today through the word. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you that, your Lord, you've blessed us at this time, that, Lord, we are alive in this time mm -hmm. to be who you want us to be and do what you want us to do. Mm -hmm. Lord, bless our week ahead of us. Allow us, Father, to tear down strongholds. Yes. Allow us, Lord, to be the change that, Lord, we need to be in this yes. world. Jesus. Father, we thank you already for what you've already done for us and, Lord, for what you're going to do for us. Mm -hmm. Father, we give you thanks for that. And Lord, I pray that you'll bless this church, allow this church to grow from strength to strength, not just in numbers, but Lord, in spiritual, spiritual um, ways that we will seek you more and love to be with you, Lord, that Lord, you'll be pleased to dwell with us as a congregation. We thank you, Father God, for today. And Lord, as we pray, as we go forward on this same platform, Lord, lives will be continued to be changed and more people will join on board and lord and see the moving of your power and your spirit we say thank you right now in jesus name amen i'm sorry benediction thank you sorry we, uh, we can say the benediction together rev can you do the benediction for us please rev, um Jonathan. and and uh, now may the saving grace of our lord and savior jesus christ can't hear you, people. Can't hear you. Take them all off mute. Take them all off mute, please. Everyone off mute. Everyone off mute. Start again, then. Let's start again, shall we? All right, let's say. And now. Love the Lord. Lord. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Love of God the Father. Father. Full fellowship. Communion of the Holy Spirit. The Comforter. Comforter. Amen. Okay, I think, Pastor, maybe next week. Maybe we can just have one person doing it. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of different types of, of, of benedictions, you know what I mean? And they're all relevant, but I think maybe just one, yeah? <laughs> so God be the glory. Good night. God bless you all. He says. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye, bye. 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 See you later, everyone. Bye. Bye. I'm a pretty